Hello and welcome to this video. Today I want to talk about setter and getter methods as well as the accessors that you can use in C-Sharp for them. Okay, let's start by cleaning up our file and our two classes here. And after that, let's start by defining a simple getter method. Okay, and what is a getter method? A getter method is basically just a method that returns an attribute that you have declared in your class. And now the common question would be, what is that good for? I mean, you could just create a public variable and after creating a public variable, you could access this value from everywhere you want. And that's where some coding principles come into play, because normally it's not a good option to create your variables as public variables if you need to access them from outside the class or from anywhere else. Normally, it's still better to create them as private variables and to create some public getter and setter methods for them to access and change their value. And there are many reasons for that. And I want to mention a few of them, not all, of course, because there are so many reasons for that, but a few because I don't just want to tell you to do something in a certain way, but you don't even know why you are doing it in that way. Because I think it's much more helpful if you understand why you are doing something in a certain way and why it's better that way. The first reason that I want to mention, and maybe also the most obvious reason, is that it's bad to expose all these variables to the Unity editor because maybe some of them are not meant to be changed in the editor, but rather only changed by code. And then you can change them in the editor. Maybe two months later, you don't even know what you did there. And then you change them in the editor and your code is not working. Or if you are working with other persons on your project, then these people maybe don't know that they can't change them in the editor and they mess up the stuff in your project. The next reason is a huge factor and that's code maintainability. Because if you have a public variable, and I hope it's at least public for a reason, and that reason is that other classes want to access this variable as well, then if you have some logic how to access this variable, how to set the value of this variable, and you want to change that logic or you want to change something about the variable, then you need to change the code of all these classes that access the variable. If you would have used setter and getter methods, however, then you would have changed only the setter and getter methods and the variables could still be accessed by all the other classes in the same way like they did it before with the setter and the getter method and the logic was only changed in the main class where you have this private variable that can be accessed by the public setter and getter method. The next reason would be validation, of course, because, for example, if you have something like player jump height and it can't be negative, you could just validate that in the setter method, but you can't validate that if it's just a public variable, or still you can, but then you need to validate this in every class that is accessing this variable. Instead, if you just do a setter method and a getter method, of course, then you just need to change that in the setter method or just need to add the validation in the setter method in this one class. Also, and that's very important for game development actually, you can easily add an event, for example, if the value has changed on your variable, if you use a setter method, because in the setter method, you can just trigger that event. But however, if you use a public variable, you can't easily add an event for when the value has changed. And the last reason that I want to mention is that you can easily create access restriction with getter and setter methods. For example, the get could be public and the set could be protected. Or the set could even be private if you want your variable to be read only for other classes. Okay, let's start the practical part with creating a normal getter method for our dog's name attribute. So after making the name attribute of our class dog private, we need to create a public method to access this name attribute. And this method will return a string because it will return our string name from our dog and we will call it getName. And that's why in the method, we need to return our string name from our class doc. And that's it. Now you have created your first getter method. To create the setter method for our attribute name, let's start by creating a public method, which will be void because it will not return anything. It will just set the name value of our class doc, but it will not return any value. And then we will call it set name. And also it needs to take a parameter of type string for our name that we want to set. Of course, this is not the case for all setter methods. There can also be setter methods that return something. For example, if you want to validate the input and only if the validation is correct, set the value, then you could return a bool variable that tells you if the value was set or not because the validation was incorrect. 
But because we didn't talk about conditions yet, I just want to stick to an easy example. And for that, now all there's left to do is to set our name attribute to the name parameter that we get from this method. Okay, let's try this out. Let's create the start method in our class YouTube again so we can run some code that will be executed. Then let's create an instance of our class dog here. And on this instance, let's call the set name and the get name method. Let's set the name to Berno. And if you run this, we can see that we successfully locked the name Berno to our console. So everything works as expected. Okay, now for our age attribute, I want to show you the shortcut with the get and set accessors from C -sharp to create a simple get and set method by default. To do that, just write an opening curly bracket behind your age attribute, followed by get semicolon, followed by set semicolon, followed by a closing curly bracket. And that's already it. And what this actually does is it creates another variable that is private in your class. And then it writes a getter and setter method for this variable automatically. And it will map this to this attribute age that we created here. You can also specifically define what this getter and setter methods shall do. But if you don't do that, it will just use the default getter and setter method style and it will just implement that automatically. Also, you can put a private or protected keyword in front of your setter or getter method here to make one of these private or protected or both of these private and protected. The last thing that I want to mention here is that you can just write get in here as well without the set, so it will just create the getter method. Okay, that's it. I hope you understood how this get and set accessors are working and that they are just the same like the getter and setter method that we wrote ourselves in the beginning. And I hope you understood how getter and setter methods are working and why they are important and why it's sometimes better to use them instead of a public variable. Welcome to the end of this video. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated. Also, if you need some high quality assets for your game or like our channel and want to support us, feel free to check out our assets at the Unity or Unreal Asset Store. you find the link to our store pages in the description. I hope you learned something new and see you next time.